Welcome one and all to Americans Learn. My name is Kit. Please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe and hit that ring bell notification. That way all of you are made aware when we upload new content onto our YouTube channel. And today, 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 we're going to learn something. Now, I think we've all been bombarded with all of the videos, posts, statements, photographs on social media that, well, maybe UFOs are real, that we're not alone in the universe, that maybe we've had extraterrestrial visitors already visit our fair little humble planet, this planet we call Earth. So um, this video was recently suggested to us, and it definitely is pretty much relatable and i think it's going to have some staying power for quite some time on the internet um why aliens might already be on their way to us on the one hand it's okay hey we're not alone in the universe on the other hand oh uh so why do you guys want to come here what 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 do you want because the truth is folks and I say this lightly, we don't know what's out there. We really don't. Or, dare I say it, if I want to go one step further, if there are other advanced alien species out there, what the overall political environment is. Now, again, just I'm overreaching just a little bit. But uh, this video uh, is, like for all the videos that we watch here on Americans Learn, um, it, it, the original link is in the description box below. So I encourage all of you, while we still have this planet under human domain, uh, to please support the original content creators. But without further ado, since I'm in charge of the ones and twos, let's get ready to play this video and pull it up in a three, a two, a one. The universe is magnificent and vast. Hundreds of billions of galaxies, trillions of stars, and even more planets. If even the tiniest fraction are habitable, then the universe should be teeming with life. And yet we see nothing, only vast emptiness. Where is everyone else? The answer to this riddle could be as exciting as it is creepy. We are early, born before almost all other life. But very soon, this may change. Not only might aliens appear, they could quickly surround us. An irreversible competition for the universe. Well, first, uh, the animation seems all cute and nice, but uh, never let your guard down because things all seem all friendly and happy, and then there's running and screaming, and the last thing I would like to see on our fair planet is a whole bunch of starships surrounding the planet Earth. And let's face it, we might have nukes, but they might just laugh at them. Might be about to begin. While this video is based on scientific papers, we're presenting interesting ideas based on little data and lots of extrapolation. So take them with a grain of salt. Okay, Fair enough. we need to look at three essential questions to understand the galactic competition. One, how fast can bacteria build spaceships? To become a star-faring civilization, life as we know it needs to master a number of very hard steps. It starts with dead stuff turning into the building blocks of life. Then it needs to organize into self-contained cells. Those cells have to learn to work together to form multicellular organisms. This keeps going until complex creatures with big brains learn to use tools and language. Civilization has to be formed from cultures that value progress and technological development. Easier said than done, and let's face it, uh... The fact that we humans are here, not including the fact that we go to war with each other, but the fact that we are here is a miracle upon itself. Looking at the fossil record and life that came before us, let's be real with each other for a moment. It was brutal, unforgiving, and it was the strongest, oh, only the strongest could survive. Survival of the fittest. Apologies for the stutter, but uh, yeah, that is... um. It's easier said than done, and it's and it's interesting that our prehistoric ancestors were able to uh, get to the point to, or at least survive to the point to where we are right now. So, pretty incredible. Um, but yeah, there's 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 a lot of roadblocks preventing civilization. And then they need to actually venture out beyond their home planet. 
On Earth, life appeared basically as soon as the oceans formed. But then, it took two billion years to make the step from single cells to multicellular organisms, and two billion more for us to appear. Culture, civilization, and space travel developed super quickly, though. Do things always take that long, or was this actually exceptionally fast? Also, passing one step does not mean the next one is guaranteed. Multicellularity evolved over 25 times independently on Earth, but there's only one species that builds spaceships. We don't know how many steps life needs to pass and how long they take to give rise to a technological civilization, but there are probably many, and it's likely that on trillions of planets, life has been trying for billions of years. Since we don't see any other technological civilizations out there, it might well be that we are a rare exception. We and that could be the reality, that maybe we are alone. Now, I know there are videos and posts and, of course, statements from whistleblowers saying, oh, that UFOs and aliens are real. Uh, okay, they're finally talking about it. Uh, but again, take everything with a grain of salt. It just could be just one big nothing burger. But this is why I think uh, Elon Musk has stated that in order for humanity to survive, we have to head out into space. And dare I say it, perhaps seed life on other worlds uh, so that life does have a chance. Perhaps we are the engineers in Prometheus. Just, I don't know, just a thought. We might be among the first, or even the first, technological civilization in the Milky Way. But this is just one piece of the puzzle. On top of that, we may have just hit the perfect time window. Why does humanity exist now? The universe is already 13.8 billion years old, but it's unlikely that many other technological civilizations had a chance to appear before us. Because in the earlier universe, life would have had a pretty hard time to emerge, let alone thrive, because it was such a hostile environment. Mm. Early stars constantly blew up, galaxies crashed into each other, and supermassive black holes vomited massive amounts of radiation, enough to sterilize galaxies over and over again. Our sun was born right at the end of this cosmic death show. The universe has never been more welcoming to life than it is now. So humanity has arrived at a very convenient spot in time. Hey, we did it at the finish line. Well, I mean, perhaps. But it does call on the question then, what is our role as perhaps the only intelligent life form on this planet or in this universe, dare I say it? Um, what do we do going forward and how do we keep humanity alive? It is an interesting concept of us being alone. It's rather sad, but perhaps maybe it's a good thing, because, again, we don't know what's out there. Maybe the earliest reasonably possible for life to thrive. What about the future? The sun burns brighter than 90% of the stars in our galaxy, and will keep getting brighter. In about a billion years, it will boil all of Earth's oceans and then become a giant that swallows it whole. So, in the galactic context, the sun is very short-lived. Most stars are red dwarfs that can sustain habitable planets for tens of trillions of years. Life on these planets has an incredibly long time window to appear and pass the hard steps. Even knowing nothing about how rare or common life is, this makes it way more likely for technological civilizations to appear sometime in the future than in the past. Because if civilizations appear at random in the Milky Way within a time window of a trillion years, then very few, if any, would appear before today. Then a couple more arrive in this period of a billion years that we're in, before all star-faring civilizations that could ever exist emerge altogether. This weird tsunami-like distribution is the result of both the hard steps model and something else. A sort of deadline for any spacefaring civilization. Any civilization coming after will find it hard to have room to survive, so all potential life has to cram in before it. Humanity exists now because otherwise we might have missed this deadline. Wow. What or who creates this deadline? Why aren't aliens already on Earth?
Humans are curious, expansionist, and hungry for energy. We've spread over the world and made it our own. Our technology has been improving over time, first slowly, then breathtakingly fast. If these things don't change drastically and our descendants want to prosper, they will expand into space. We could construct a Dyson Swarm for endless energy and transform planets into new homes. We could cross interstellar distances, allowing us to reach for planets around distant stars. If we have the motivation, we can become a galactic civilization. A civilization that does this sort of stuff can be called loud because its activity creates noise. Signs that can be detected from far away. Imagine someone in a forest, cutting down trees, starting fires and laying down roads. The more intense their work, the easier they are to notice. An expanding technological civilization would probably be hard to miss. Our telescopes would pick up all that energy and we would clearly identify artificial interference with stars and planets. Well, there's another thing to take into account, and that is if they are truly an advanced civilization, they might have technology that we can't detect. It is possible. However out there that might sound, you know, there there is the possibility that uh, advanced intelligence dare I say it, other alien life forms, perhaps they just want to avoid other intelligent life forms, you know. I think it's uh, interesting, you know, when we see, for example, large predators compete with one, in, one another, usually, you know, let's face it, life is brutal and harsh. Avoidance of, of physical injury and uh, permanent disability is, I think, on top of any living organism. And so usually... Trying to avoid conflict as much as possible must be the exceptional option until there's no other choice. Um, and I think with intelligent life forms, perhaps avoiding the other civilization is the best thing possible. Because you never know who's the other side. Perhaps aliens view us as a threat and uh, see us as barbaric and they don't want anything to do with, uh, well, these little humans on this planet called Earth. Another consequence of this business is that it's very disruptive to the environment. Clearing a forest means the end of its wildlife. Human activity has left no chance for a squirrel civilization to appear. Not because we hated squirrels, it's simply that the thought that they might want to do that at some point never crossed our minds and we <laughs> needed wood. Similarly, if loud civilizations were running around the galaxy in the past, terraforming planets or harvesting the energy of stars, they may have prevented our existence. Had aliens started colonizing Earth while we were still sludge in the oceans, that sludge would never have turned into humans. This is how loud aliens create a deadline for new civilizations appearing. The galaxy may have trillions of years to create life, but there may only be a short window for it to spread and thrive. Wow. Even if a loud civilization respects planets with naturally occurring life and expands around them like humans do with wildlife reserves, any civilization on such a planet would not be able to expand ever. Trapped forever on a tiny island. But here we are, so loud aliens were probably never here. What about aliens that don't expand? They would be quiet aliens. They're probably limited to one star system and don't have a noticeable impact on their cosmic surroundings. Humanity is like this right now. We wouldn't be able to detect ourselves from the other side of the Milky Way. If they stay quiet forever, maybe because of their culture or abilities, then they are not really a concern for us. We only have one sample to draw from, humanity. And right now, we are on the path to becoming loud. If we're not special and succeed anyway, then any other civilization with the motivation and resources to would eventually expand beyond its planet of origin. Okay, what are the consequences of all these assumptions and ideas? Grave consequences. Race to the stars. If we are really early, then eventually others will catch up with us. Okay. Civilizations will emerge all over the place. And these new aliens will look at space, see no signs of life, and come to the same conclusion. They exist because loud civilizations have not yet taken over everything, but it only takes one loud civilization to crowd them out of the entire galaxy. They, like us, will face an important decision. Do they stay quiet, take it easy, and tend to their planet for as long as possible, 
or do they start expanding to take a chunk of the galaxy before someone else arrives? Meeting others does not necessarily mean war or conflict, but it means that new borders will arise, limits that may persist forever. In the worst case, a civilization could be completely enveloped by the empires of others, eternally doomed to be a galactic backwater without control over their fate. Well, that's... Well, I guess that's pretty... familiar to what we see in our political atmosphere on this planet. Um, we see other countries do that to other countries, and uh, it, it would seem quite reasonable that other... Perhaps maybe galactic superpowers would do the same thing to other civilizations in the galaxy. I mean, it, it is a consideration. So if we want a seat at the galactic adults' table, we best get to work. If we really are early, we have an incredible opportunity to mold thousands or even millions of planets according to our vision and dreams. And one day when we meet others, we can greet them and meet them as equals. Wouldn't that be nice? If you want to explore the vast universe from the Well, it would be nice. It... But knowing our track record and how conflicts happen here on planet Earth and how the humans go to war with each other, um, I want to be idealistic and hope that we could have a Gene Roddenberry version of the future. Star Trek, it would, it would be far more acceptable. Peace and understanding. Uh, however, I don't think that that's what's going to happen. Life is always in competition with itself. And life consumes life, unfortunately. And uh, knowing humanity, and perhaps maybe if there's other spacefaring civilizations out there, they could be just like us as well. And they might not be too keen on the idea of other civilizations walking into their backyard. I do hope that that's not the case and we don't go into a 40K universe because I think the survivors or the living participants would envy the dead as they are not part of that 40K nightmare. But what are your thoughts? Are we alone in the galaxy? Are aliens on their way to see us? Is it our opportunity to perhaps maybe mold the universe as we see fit? Now, again, humanity has these weapons called nukes pointed at each other and someday there might be a very narrow-minded, small-brained individual that might push that shiny red button and then that's the end of humanity. Do you think we'll make it to the stars? Are we alone? Are aliens coming to see us? Could we build a better future in the galaxy? Type your thoughts in the comment section below. I'd like to hear them. What was that? We're going to mosey on out of here and here's hoping that perhaps maybe brighter days are ahead for us. Until then, keep your heads on a swivel, keep on winning, drink water, and stay safe. Peace.